So tell us, so listen, what happened, man? Tell us what happened. So what happened was um, I've been thinking about getting an FUE transplant procedure done. And um, I've been doing some research. Admittedly, in hindsight, I realized that I've probably done um, very little research. And I think I could have done a lot more. Um, but what um, transpired, what happened was, is I got in touch because I knew I heard about Turkey, Istanbul, that there was affordable FUE transplants being conducted. And I found a UK-based um, middleman or organization who advertised on the internet. Yeah. And um, I got in touch with this person and um, met him in East London in um, Islington at their office. And... Um, a rented office, small office, and the person generally made a really, really good impression on me, you know, and it looked very professional, um, a very trust, seemingly trustworthy person, and um, I had very little doubts that there was anything wrong with it, really, and also I've got to say, I didn't pursue it straight away because I was obviously still reluctant and, you know, and wanted to think about it a bit more, and I've got to say as well, whenever I had questions, they were answered, um, I never felt like I was being pushed into anything. Um, you know, it was, you know, when I didn't respond to an email, which the last email conversation might have passed for months, there was no contact from this individual pushing me to go ahead with the transplant. Th those are all, good, those are all good signs. I mean, that yeah, definitely... I was going to say, great indicators that they're not a pushy outfit, that uh, they're not after you know, the, the almighty dollar or the, or the pound in this case. And, uh, and that's what I was thinking up front. It was like, okay, it sounds like a legit outfit. So I'm sorry, continue. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. And, um, so basically what happened then after a little while, I, um, spoke to this individual on the phone again. I said, I had made up my mind. I really wanted to go ahead with the FUE procedure, um, transplant procedure. And, expressed also my, my desire to particularly go with a, um, a certain surgeon they had been working with um, by the name of Dr. Demis, Erkan Domisoy. Okay. Um, unfortunately, yeah. I was informed that um, they had stopped working with this individual because he was operating out of a, a flat, out of an apartment in Istanbul. And they said because this, this UK outfit, they said because they want to keep it professional and in a hospital setting, they have changed working um, with another, they start working with another well, surgeon. Well, the truth of the matter is Turkey itself made the, you know, the, the, that, that, that is basically a new, relatively new rule. In order to uh, mm -hmm. perform cosmetic surgery in Turkey, hair transplantation included, it has to be in a hospital-like setting or a hospital-accredited mm -hmm. setting. Am I right about that, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, if I understand it correctly, it was only uh, mandatory as of the beginning of 2014 right. that um, that you have to be in a clinic, an actual hospital um, or government-approved hospital setting. Up until the end of 2003, all these places are working literally out of townhouses yeah. and apartments, and right. that was that was the norm for them, where uh, the, the the patient would have the procedure on the first floor and then they go upstairs to their their room right. and and that's their that's where they sleep if i may as well the the surgeon who i had initially requested to have the transplant with um it turns out when i then flew up to and and um to when i arrived in istanbul and i turned up at the hospital the very same surgeon i wanted to have the procedure with was conducting a procedure um, right next door in the hospital there you go and um that sort of upset me, and in hindsight as well, I was um, it, my transplant included um, in the cost was included two nights in a hotel, in a very I'm got to say a very nice hotel, and um, I met a German man there, and he had just completed, he had just done a, um, a transplant with his doctor, who I'd initially wanted the transplant with, but anyway. What happened was they, they said to me, oh, you can't have the procedure with this doctor that I request to have it with because we stopped working with them. But we have another doctor that we're working with now, and he's just as good, if not better, than the one 
that you had wanted to transplant. Now, with. maybe I missed this, but was this once you step foot, you know, in uh, in Europe? I mean, is this is this or in Turkey? Is this when you found this out? Oh, they're still in London. Sorry, I'm jumping back and forth. There is um, the encounter with a um, with a patient who had just completed a transplant with Dr. Demis, so I was in the hospital. Right. And that mm -hmm. was already here in Turkey. It was on Monday. My procedure was on Tuesday with another doctor, Dr. Typhoon. Right, but when, I guess my, my question is this. Uh, were, when you got on that plane, were you under the impression yeah. that you were going to have surgery with a doctor that you requested? No, I knew it was um, pointed out to me by the middleman in London that... It would be another doctor, but this particular doctor is just as qualified and experienced as the one I had requested. Okay, so that so that allayed your fears. Okay. You were like, okay, well, I'm going to do this anyway. I've already I, I, I've already allotted this time in my life. I've already put out the money. I've already you know signed on the dotted line. I might as well go for it. But your concern was think. that when you when you after after you had the surgery with this other doctor, that you found out that the doctor that you originally requested was performing surgery in the same hospital. That's right. And and, and this was after what? they told you that he if I if I recall correctly, you had said that uh, they told you we're not working with him because he is preferring to continue working in the flat and not working right, in the hospital, yeah. which we don't feel is professional enough, and we want to associate with a doctor that's professional enough to work in a hospital. Is that what they told you? That's right. That's what they told me yeah. six, seven months ago in the UK when I decided to go ahead with it. And I've got to say this as well. I trusted the middleman in London. You know, he, you know, he seemed a very, very genuine guy, and I'm still in two minds about whether this guy's for real or whether he's a crook. Um, but... The thing is, I really trusted that individual. So when he mentioned the name of the surgeon that I was going to have the, the transplant with, I did very minimal research in my own naivety in hindsight, you know. And, and I looked up, I found some information on the guy, and it, yes, apparently had all those credentials. But now in hindsight, I'm looking back to those websites, and I'm thinking, Alex, what were you doing? What, why didn't you do any further research? And... Um, well, I mean, okay, so so this happened. That it, you know, it's 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 kind of a a shocking situation, obviously, uh, especially since you were told something, you know, otherwise. But how did the procedure go? That's what I was going to say. So I, and that was really the most concerning thing for me because I've got um, email evidence and paper evidence and the website of that particular surgeon as well state that the whole procedure would be conducted by the surgeon himself um, because they say it's, they, they, they are not, because they want a very high standard of care and they want all the work to be done by the surgeon. What, tra what happened though was on the day when I arrived, um, well, first on Monday I landed in, in Istanbul. I was then picked up at the airport and brought to the hotel. Then I was contacted by um, another doctor and said, that I'd be having the procedure on Tuesday the following morning. But I insist that I wanted to see the surgeon on Monday, the day I, day I arrived. So that was then arranged for me as well to, to have a meeting with him. Right. I met him in the hospital and it was a very good meeting. He seemed, you know, it was a hospital environment. I, I was still under the impression I'm in the right hands here. Then I returned to the hospital and just chilled out for the evening. The next morning I was picked up at 8.30 in the morning. I had paid a deposit of 300 pounds in the UK and the whole procedure came to a total of 2,200 pounds. So I then had to pay the, the 1,900 pounds by debit card or credit card with, um, um, in Turkish lira. And, 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 and this was for how many graphs? Approximately. Um, I, it was officially, it was for 2,200, but any graft over that would be free of charge. Right. And eventually, what they said is I, that I got 3,400 grafts. Right, that's a banging deal. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a great deal. If, if, if the work is good, then you got an incredible deal. 3,200, but, you know, I think I freaked out a little bit after. Let me just... Um, try to express what my concern was is 
I felt a little bit rushed. Once I made the decision, yes, I'm going ahead, let's pay, then it was sort of like, okay, bam, paid my £1,900. And um, the hair, hairline was was drawn on, and um, I was very happy with it. It looked decent in my natural look. And um, my head was then shaved, and the nurses obviously um, put some local anesthetic in the back of my head, and then started with mechanically removing the hair follicles or the, the graft. Right now. Already I said, and there was a real language barrier. There was a lady who was a bit of eye candy, but also the, the translator there. <laughs> but she was not in the actual um, the, the theater where the operation happened. But, but you, 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 nurses, you, said, you, you said earlier that you were uh, uh, told and, and provided, in, provided this in writing that the physician was actually going to be performing the entire procedure. Exactly, and that's what upset me. Yeah. Because then the women just brushed me off as they were removing the hair follicles or the, the, the graft. Oh, and yeah, you yeah, say they be because it was more than one. It, there were th three technicians doing this? Yes, three. Two, two women working and extracting the, the graft, and then one woman placing them. Um, I didn't look, but you know where they put them in a, in a little glass. In liquid or whatever they do. Petri dishes. Yeah. Huh? Probably petri dishes. Yeah, yeah. Petri yeah. dishes. But you know, this that that's what's interesting, and I think that, I, that and, and that would freak me out too if I was under the impression that okay, I checked out this doctor's credentials. The middleman said that this doctor, you know, or the salesman, I should say, said that this doctor was, uh, you know, a highly credentialed and an expert at what he does. Maybe even better than the doctor that you were you were considering before. And then you got something in writing from the facility itself saying that the physician was going to perform the entire procedure. I would freak the fuck out too. Yeah. You know, of course, I, I, I get it. I get it. So I don't think that you're overreacting at all. Yeah, and then eventually the surgeon did come. Uh, the, the, the ladies had finished removing. And I, 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 don't, I don't doubt that they were experienced. It seemed to me that they, were, they knew what they were doing. However, you know, it, it's not what I was told. And right. also, you know, there was a real language barrier. Whenever I said something, you know, it was just, they just brushed me off and carried on anyway. And um, also later when, anyway, after that, the surgeon then actually did come, but it was not after, at the front of my head, they made little incisions and the nurses started doing this. I'm like, what are you doing? The, the surgeon's meant to do this. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, but we're starting already. I said, no, no, hold on. Get me the translator. I'm, I want the surgeon here because he's doing the incisions in the front of my Well, I'm, I'm glad that you spoke you. up because a lot of guys would just sit there kind of paralyzed and not knowing how to handle the situation. Yeah, I mean, I was adamant, and um, especially because I, I knew that's one of the most important parts of the procedure. So the surgeon did come and um, do all the incisions. And, um, and then disappeared again, and I then had lunch, and um, a very tasty lunch, just a half-hour break, and then I returned, and then two women, two nurses, they planted the hair follicles for about three, four hours. Right. But again, I, I was, again, flabbergasted, you know, it's like, what's going on, where's the surgeon? Again, he was nowhere to be seen, and... Um, and yeah, and that was then three, four hours, and the two women, the two ladies, were talking as if they're having a coffee morning, you know. And I was just, ex I said to them, "Is everything okay?" You know, they were just talking and talking. And sure, they're probably talking you know, about the, 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 you know, the, the, the guy they banged the night before last, or yeah, what, whatever exactly. else. The date they've been on, or yeah. the, the office gossip, you know. And it was really, I, I, and I felt that it was being done rushed, you know, and. Then in hindsight, you know, and that was the, the actual procedure. And then I also met a German um, guy, and I speak German, as you might be able to tell by my accent. And, um, and I spoke to that guy, and he had had the procedure with that doctor who had been operating next door, who is, was the surgeon that I had originally wanted to have the procedure with. Right. And I asked this German guy, it's like, did your doctor do the whole procedure? And he said, yeah, from you know, right from the beginning to the end. And that's when I suddenly started to freak out and, and, um, and did a bit more further research and 
couldn't really find any information, you know, on this doctor I had to trans transplant with, you know, very little online presence, very dubious, very, you know, I found one, after long, long time spending on the internet, I found one picture which would seem genuine, or which I know was genuine because I recognized the nurses and the, the, the surgery, and it had one after photo, which really didn't look and didn't look so good. Um, well, well, you know, well, look, look. Here, here's the good news. Yeah. A, this is, you're not the only person this has happened to. So you're certainly not alone. And B, believe it or not, this happens in the U.S. every single day. So it's not just because you decided to travel to Turkey to get, uh, you know, to, to get a lower priced. Procedure. I mean, this happens in the U.S., it happens in the U.K., it happens all over the world. And yeah. sa sadly, um, it, it's just the nature of this industry. Now, with that said, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a bad outcome. We don't know how skilled these technicians are. We don't know how well they were able to extract those graphs and, you know, the, how experienced they are as far as placement and even placing recipient sites. Again, it's not unheard of for technicians to do the entire procedure here in the U.S. Now, do I agree with that? No. Would I send a family member to a physician or to a clinic that allows that? No, I wouldn't. But it happens. And it happens even in some of the better clinics. You know, and some of these, some of these technicians are extremely skilled. So... I don't know. I mean, Joe, what do you think? I mean, did you get a, a, a did you get a, a, to take a look at his work? We we exchanged uh, you know a little bit of uh, video on on Skype when we first started talking, and um, you know the video quality wasn't the best. So I couldn't actually see any real detail, but I, I I told Alex that you know the shape looks fine, the height of the hairline looks fine. He didn't get anything that was aggressive, um, anything that would be. Um, you know, difficult to to deal with. Well, those if, those are if two, he did need repair. Those are two important points that you. Just uh, made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the first thing I look for. I was, uh, you know, honestly, I was halfway expecting a straight hairline to two centimeters oh, above oh. his eyebrows, and thank God that's not what he got. He got a, a an age appropriate hairline that, if it doesn't turn out to his full satisfaction, um, if the density isn't what it could be, if maybe you know, I'm just throwing possibilities out there, it can be addressed. You know, a little bit of refinement with a second surgery, maybe a little bit of density. If he needs it, he may not. He may be fine. And I have stressed this to Alex. My challenge with what, what he's been through is the constant amount of disinformation that he's been met with, the, um, the, 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 the mishandling or the, should I say the handing off of the blame. Right. Um, and you know, one thing that Alex was telling me, I asked him, how long did it take for the doctor to make the incisions? Now he had 3,200 and change incisions made. How long did it take, Alex? Um, I think it was about 40 minutes. Yeah. 40, maybe more. I'm, I'm maybe, uh, yeah, I think it was about 40, but you know, the, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't like a long, long time. Yeah. And I don't think. You know, Alex. Alex has gone through something that, like, like you said, Spencer. Too many people are going through, and that is, in, in addition, to what you're talking about is he started doing his research after the fact, and that happens so many times. I get so many guys that email or call, and they say, "Hey, I just had a procedure the other day, and I started doing some research, and yeah. I found you guys, or I found found out this information about my doctor, or you know, whatever." Too many people wait till after the fact. That's when they start getting interested well, in finding out what the hell they it, just went it, through. It is interesting to you know. I mean, if you were, if I were to give you some, uh, you know, access to uh, our inboxes, especially the IHRS and the American Hair Loss Association, the panic that Alex is going through right now mm -hmm. is voiced. I mean, countless times every week. From guys who, you know, after they got back to their hotel rooms, they decided to do a little research and then they find the IHRS or they find Ball Truth Talk or they mm -hmm. find the American Hair Loss Association and they're terrified that they made a mistake. And the good news is there's a, a, a larger percentage than you would think that really didn't make such a terrible mistake. And Al Alex may be one of these guys. Yeah, I, I agree 100% with that. But, you know, going back to 
the issue I do have with this situation, and, and again, his result may be perfectly fine. The fact that this middleman um, in East London, I, I believe he said, um, completely is, I, I don't want to say stonewalling him on, on these things, but he's, he's, he's offering up answers that aren't really addressing the question. Right. Alex, tell them about the photos that you sent me. I, I'd asked Alex, I said, well, where are the before and after photos? And Alex said, well, you have to ask them to email them to you. And that was another red flag for me. So he sent these to me. Alex, what what did we find out? Yeah, um, well, I sent you the emails that, that I was sent with the attachments um, with the before and after pictures. And um, it was you who pointed out to me that, that um, they, they weren't genuine. They were taken from other um, transplant clinics. You're kidding me. This I did not know. Yeah. All right. So, so okay. So, so when, you, when you said, okay, maybe I'm confused. You mm -hmm. asked to have your own before and then post-operative images sent to you, right? Oh, I've received those since the op, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, okay. But so that's not what you're talking about. You were talking about what? No, no, no it was... It was months before I actually went ahead with the procedure. They sent me a folder, an attachment with an email with before and after pictures from other um, apparent um, oh, sure. um, yeah, that's, patients of theirs. Yes. It was a PDF. It was a PDF file so that you, you know, it's difficult yeah. to extract the, the images and do a search, but I know how to do that. Right. And, and so he sent this to me because I, I wanted to see the work of, of this doctor. I want to see the work of the, the clinic that this guy in London was representing. And he sends me the PDF and I see this nice little slideshow that, that's set up. It was, it was pretty slick. So I extracted the images and then did a search online. And uh, I think there were four gallery results total and two of them were taken from other clinics. One from a, a, a clinic that is not an IAHRS member um, in uh, in the southern United States, and then uh, another before after from a clinic in a former Soviet bloc state. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, and listen. That's again. That's that's not unusual. Sadly, that is a pretty commonplace in this in this field. But it's it just goes to show you that yeah. Okay. You know the. A, a salesman has to appear to be genuine. That's how they are good. You know, that's how they make money. So if they're they're not going to do well in their profession unless they are able to convince people that they are genuine, you know, and, and caring people. So um, you know, I'm not saying that I'm not saying this particular guy is a bad guy, but you know, yeah. these guys are paying. You know, they have their their rent to pay or their mortgages to pay. They, it's a job. That's, that's all it is. And if you don't do your due diligence, then you are depending on this person who is making a commission, possibly, or maybe he's getting a straight salary, uh, that sells hair transplants like he would be selling cars. Yeah. And Spencer, one, one more thing is also I've since requested from the doctor here to have some before and after pictures, but some after pictures a few months down the line. And he's refused to give any to me. And he said, if I wanted any, then I needed to contact the London um, person. Yeah, because and, um, I, 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 I would bet that this guy doesn't have any of his own. Yeah. yeah. You know, so he's depending on uh, the, the London uh, office to provide these images. You know, and I, I've said this before, and it, it's so funny because I think I, 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 you can't imagine how dumb some of these doctors actually are. I've been contacted on multiple occasions throughout the years, people go to the site, they go to IHRS.org, they read about the organization, they maybe learn a little bit about what we've been doing through, through our other organizations, and they still are stupid enough to contact us saying that they are just getting into the field and they want to know if we can provide them with a portfolio of before <laughs> and after pictures and how much would that cost? <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, th this is how, and this is how these guys, you know, run their operations. It's, uh, it's, it's the, it's, it's the behavior that makes my position look so bad. I mean, this is what I do, and guys like, uh, you know, the 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 gentleman that Alex has been dealing with, it gives us all a bad name, and it's still happening, and it's still something I fight every day. I mean, I, you know. 
it, it's, it frustrates the hell out of me because it just makes things worse for everyone that's actually being honest about the stuff, you know, about, you know, the, the way I do my consultations, the way Specs does his consultations. And, you know, the, the handful of guys that are in the industry that I feel are doing a stand up job, being honest about what they do, being honest about, you know, the competition. And, uh, it, it just, it just keeps the, the, the slope that we're on a steep one because we're always having to fight against guys like this that make us look bad and I'm, I'm getting tired of it. And so that's why I'm glad that Alex came on to talk about this because, you know, honestly, I don't think the doctor is really at fault. I think he's just doing his job, just doing what he wants to do, um, you know, to, to put out some results, but it's the way that this guy in London is representing him that that's wrong. Well, the, the doctor is being hired by this company or the doctor is paying this company to, you know, get them patients. So the doctor does his thing the way that he does it. And the, you, your results may end up spectacular, you know, and I hope that they do. I did receive some um, before and after pictures from three people, but, and, and they were genuine from the, the, the clinic, but they, they were directly post-op. They right. weren't several yeah. months down the line, which I had requested to have. Right, because so there's a good there's a good chance that he's relatively new, and this is every day there are new guys uh, from all over the world getting into this business, and these are you know MDs, DOs, whatever the credentials are in uh, different European countries, and they realize it's basically a cash business, and sometimes these doctors are approached by these uh, consulting companies. Or by these, you know, uh, uh, you know, even even clinics who want them to to work in house, and they say, "Listen, you know, we need a doctor. This is an easy procedure to learn. Uh, you can make this much money in a day. And you don't have to do that much work. So why don't you come on board?" And a lot of doctors just can't say no. They and they really believe that it's a a relatively one size fits all procedure, and it's easier. Uh, to learn than we actually know that it is. I mean, this is, you know, hair transplantation is probably one of the most aesthetically challenging of all cosmetic procedures because, A, you know, you're working with, uh, you know, live organs that have to that have to grow. So there's so, so much involved in just keeping those hair follicles intact and, uh, you know, alive in a sense and healthy so they they could be ro they can grow in a robust fashion and then you have to deal with angles and you have to deal with scarring and you have to deal with placement of grafts and there's just so much and plus it's so labor intensive that you have to have a really well trained staff uh, it's not like putting in a chin implant there's a, there's a there's a lot involved so look That's a good it, point it is what it is man it, it it is what it is but you know what maybe this guy's staff is good and that's what i'm hoping and judging from what joe is saying at least you weren't butchered at least you have yeah. whatever happens however the growth is it's going to be repairable if it doesn't meet your expectations so yeah, that's thank, you. thank you i've got to say as well i'm i'm i had the surgery on um i had the procedure done on tuesday it's Saturday today, going into Sunday, and um, I went through hell and back, I tell you, I was an emotional wreck, I was really upset, and I really want to thank Joel, because he, he really um, supported me throughout, and, um, you know, I felt extremely lonely here, but also I had my, my family who supported me, and um, really put things into perspective, and, um, you know, I'm feeling so much better, because I've also just come to a place of acceptance, what... I'm just going to have to be patient. I'll have to see what happens, you know, six, seven months down the line, you know, and hopefully, you know, I, I hang on to the faith and, um, you know, that, that I hang on to the, to the fact that maybe, just maybe I will have um, come, come up with a good result. Um, but, you know, I'm, um, it was a very, very difficult time for me the last few days, and um, I'm feeling so much better today. And um, I'm, I'm healing up all right. The swelling's gone. I'm glad you know, that you. I'm, I'm glad that you had an opportunity to speak with Joe, and I'm glad that mm -hmm. you know you had an opportunity to tell your story on the broadcast because I think it's really important for others 
to to listen and to take heed. And it, it does again, you know. And 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 the truth is, we don't know what your end result is going to be. Mm. But you should not have had to have gone through all this anxiety and everything that you went through during surgery day, and then just the, the just uh, the, the self doubt. I mean, that's something you know. Going through cosmetic surgery is difficult enough. You didn't need to go through what you went through. And if we could help mm. others avoid the same situation that you just dealt with, um, that's what this is all about. Um, but in hindsight, when I confronted the London person about this, it's like, how come the surgeon didn't perform the surgery as is clearly stated on the contract, um, on, the, on the description of the procedure? Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, yeah, well, he's doing two to three procedures in one afternoon or on one day so, so that we can keep the price down. Again, that's something that I wasn't told right from the start. And right. it was misinformation after misinformation, excuses and justification. But still, I've got to say also, they have still been answering the phones and I've been pestering them and I've actually just stepped back a little bit and that's why I didn't also mention the, the company's name because I'm still in sort of what is going on because you know, my, my father said if they were real crooks, they would have long gone. And um, the fact is, they're still there. They're, they're writing me an email asking, Mr. Mr. So-and-so, are you all right? Well, well listen, um, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this. I, and I don't disagree with your father uh, completely, but some of the best crooks will stand their ground. And they, you know, and, and usually these type of crooks kind of like have sociopathic tendencies. And I'm not saying that this guy is, is one of these guys. You may be in great hands. But, you know, all I'm saying is based on your own observations and your story, things were a little fugazi, if you know what that means. Things were a little bit off in my view. However, you may end up with one of the better results out there. And, and again, I've seen that. I have heard stories very similar to yours. And then eight months later, someone is, you know, the same person contacts me and they're just so relieved that it worked out for them. And, you know, now they just wish that they didn't have to go through all of that anxious time. So, I, yeah. listen, that could happen. And I saw you briefly online when we were trying to do the original uh, Skype call. And uh, Joe is right. I mean, I think your hairline placement is excellent. So, I think at, at the very least, just from viewing you for that, you know, cu- couple of moments, uh, it certainly doesn't look like you were that screwed up, at, if screwed up at all. You may, everything may turn out 100%. And I agree 100% with that. But back to what you're talking about with, um, you know, with, with what Alex's father said, and you agree with that. I mean, I, I understand your your position. My position is that the only thing that Alex was told that was truth was that it's a nice hotel and that he'll have tax, taxi transfers between the hotel and the clinic. That's it. And the price. And the price. Nothing else was true. Yeah. And And that to me... Oh, fr- quite well, frankly, dude, I'm that, trying not to it, scare the kid. Come on. But that, well, I don't want to scare him. But, I mean, he understands this. Yeah. And that and that pisses me off. Yeah. And this is where I think that the 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 onus lies on the the middleman, the the salesman in London, because he's the one that's filling him full of BS. The doctor, he's probably not even aware of what's being said. I'll I'll, I'll give I'll, I'll I'll give that point. Okay, he might not even be aware of what's being said. But it's this guy in London that suckered, I'm sorry, but suckered Alex into this. He's the one responsible for all the lies. Not a single thing that was told to him is true except for the hotel and the taxi transfers. Well, you're right. You're you're, you're And right. that's what pisses me off. And I, listen, I, I get it. That's why I do what I do and that's why you do what you do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with that said, this is a... Uh, you know, it's a, it's an important cautionary tale for other young guys who are considering uh, go, going overseas uh, or going to a different country to have a hair transplant. There are some great surgeries being performed in Turkey. There are some great hair transplant clinics in Turkey. Um, I always suggest that you actually speak with the clinic. You know, it's great yeah. if you have the opportunity to have a consultation with someone closer to home, but make sure that you're speaking with the clinic directly, and then you can have a consultation with the person that's in your hometown. 
if that's made available. But speak with the clinic, check out the clinic's, clinic's website, try to speak with people who have had surgery with this particular doctor and their staff, even before you are you know, dealing with the, con- with, with the consultation, if possible. Um, that's not always possible. But at the very least, once you get to the point where you have a consultation with a consultant, see if you can get some names. A couple of phone numbers, at yeah. the very least. Or, you know, even better, see if you can Skype with the person so you can actually see their results. I, think I we just have want to, to say, say thank you, and um, thank you for um, the Board Truth Talk um, website and um, for Joel Tronic to... Um, you know, give me some insight and, and support and just, I was a bit regretful that I didn't come across your um, information um, before the procedure and um, and I was a bit annoyed with myself, you know, for having been so naive, but you know, I've come to a place now of acceptance and only time will tell and I'll certainly keep you updated and, and I will also post on the website, I'll, 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 I will write a thread and um, post some pictures so you can follow my progress. Coast to coast and worldwide. You know, I just want to say, you know, you guys are doing a, doing a great thing. It's such an uncomfortable topic to talk about, especially for a guy, you know, young guys in their early 20s. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm glad that you know, I could tune in and, you know, listen to you guys. Spencer Cobran's The Bald Truth.